Smooth Productions. Now, you're, we're going to move into your, your time spent at Guantanamo. Can you uh, talk a little bit about that for a few minutes? Yeah, um, let me try to explain how I, how I got there. Um, by the, uh, by the year 2000, um, it was becoming more difficult for me physically to keep up, uh, with, with what is all the, all that is required to, uh, be an, an infantryman in the field. <clears throat> so I, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to, I was only going to have so much time left before my, my body let go. Uh, wanting to prolong that as much as possible, um, I started thinking about transitioning to the, uh, to the National Guard, you know, leaving active duty. Figured I could do it for many, many, many more years, you know, a week in the month and two weeks in the, in the summertime. And, uh, frankly, I was kind of getting tired of being employed all the time by, uh, by that point. Um, I found out about a program that, uh, that launched in, in 1999. It's called the Combat Reform Initiative. Now, this, uh, this was a program where they were allowing, they were seeking junior officers in the combat arms on active duties, you know, lieutenants mainly. Um, they were giving, willing to give them early outs from their service obligation. Like, for example, a West Point graduate has an eight-year active duty obligation. Um, RTC graduates who are on scholarship have a an eight-year obligation as well, but only four years active. And then the, the other four in the, in the Guard or Reserves. So to imagine that the Army launched a program to allow a West Point graduate with a two years of uh, active duty service, an option to get out of the Army early and transition into the National Guard, that was crazy to think that that was happening. And on top of that, the guys who were seeking it didn't have to uh, inform their chain of command. You know, they didn't have to tell their bosses they were looking to get up. They just applied for the program. And when they're, they were accepted, they show up and with their orders to leave, and there's nothing the command can do about it. So on, on, that was another astounding fact. So um, in the in the late nineties, there was a program to push experienced uh, junior combat officers out of the regular army and into the National Guard. So I was accepted to that, and uh, I left Germany September two thousand, thinking I was going to be I uh, finished my twenty years and as a fat, drunk, and happy National Guardsman. How funny for me, <laughs> a year later, when September 11th happened, um, I got, it took uh, about two months to, to mobilize. We got the first call up was uh, around November 16th, 2001. It was the wave of uh, to get guys on active duty and place armed National Guardsmen into the airports. Yeah, so everyone would feel safe flying again. This was right when the TSA was formed and uh, became operating. Uh, so I I had soldiers on active duty uh, for that purposes. I helped set up the uh, airport missions uh, throughout the state of Virginia, and I worked as a security uh, security section commander at uh, Fort Pickett, Virginia, which is a Logistics base in the home of the Virginia National Guard. So I was plugged into the, right there with the commanding general, uh, who was running the, the airport mission. Um, we did that until, uh, we did that for about a year. Um, no, we did that for about eight months. And then in October 2002, we got, um, and the, the Airport mission was volunteers, and I volunteered because, frankly, I really wanted to be back in uniform at that point. Um, the Guantanamo deployment was involuntary. So I was pulling, I was, I, I was in command of a National Guard company, Company C, 2nd Battalion, 116th Infantry out of Harrisonburg, Virginia, 
It's where James Madison University is. Uh, I was pulling kids out of college. I was pulling, uh, you know, guys who had been in the guard for 15 years and never thought they would ever get deployed, you know, away from their families and their, and their jobs. Um, and the deal was we were going to go to, uh, Guantanamo Bay for six months and then return to the, to the United States and do a, another six month. Um, I, they didn't tell us what we were going to be doing. Uh, but it, it, the implication was we'd only be in Cuba for six months and then we'd be closer to home and, you know, guys could see their families. Um, we mobilized on November 1st, uh, 2002 and actually deployed, uh, on the 4th, which was my, my 28th birthday. It was the first time that that unit had deployed since World War II. Uh, so it was a pretty big deal. Uh, we marched, uh, out of our armory and said goodbye to the families and got on the buses and off to Fort Bragg for training where we trained up in a blizzard <laughs> to go and to do security operations on a Caribbean island, which I thought was pretty funny. And this was the first time in decades, I believe, that the National Guard had been used in this way. Is that correct? That is, that is correct. And when you were first told that you were going to be going to Guantanamo Bay, uh, this was right after the first pictures became coming out. Or was that a little bit? Or were you, or were you already there when that happened? Now that that happened uh, while we were going into into train up, and I missed a lot of it. But of course, uh, I was getting um, you know daily intelligence briefings. Um, from the battalion commander uh, and the um, S2, which is intelligence, the guys who do do that. So we knew that there was some controversy about it, and uh, but there was a new general that was going down, a guy named uh, Major General Jeffrey Miller, and he was supposed to be the guy who was going to fix all this. And they also, right as we were transitioning down there, they closed down um Camp X ray, which is where those pictures were taken, and they had started building Camp Delta, which is where the facility is now. And did your preparation change after the controversy started and the pictures started coming out or or was it still basically the same? How did your the soldiers under underneath in your, underneath your command feel about that or how did all this did this change the tensions? about going uh, to Cuba, or or did everything stay pretty much the same? And everything was pretty much stayed the same. You know, there were, there were some guys that were really happy to be um, to be on active duty, you know, because a lot of those guys made more, would, would have been making more money um, in the Army than what they were doing for their civilian jobs. Uh, I, was, I was one of those people. Um, there were guys who were mad as, mad as can be, that they had to go. They were, you know, again, I took kids out of school. So some people were, were, were angry about it. Other people were excited about it. A lot of people were apathetic about it. The thing is though, you know, you keep, you keep soldiers busy doing things so that they, uh, don't have time to sit around and have a bitch session. Or ideally that's what you want to do. So when you say you, you took kids right out of college, were they, were they, they had not yet graduated, but they were in ROTC programs, or how did that? Work? No, they they were. Uh, you can you can enlist in the National Guard at a high school, and uh, and go to college, and they will pay for college. Um, so these were guys who uh, who had done that. Who were you know they go to basic training over the summertime, and then they start drilling with the unit. Um, and there were other guys, the, if they were, uh, in one of the first two years of ROTC, they were not under an army contract yet. So they were technically in the guard. So they came, but, uh, year three and year four ROTC cadets were their ROTC contracted, uh, preempted 
uh, their National Guard contract. So they stayed home. Okay, and um, when you first arrived at Guantanamo Bay, um, how was the the feeling around the detainment camp? Was it because uh, I'm assuming this, this is the first time your direct unit was going there, and after the controversy, was there harsh instructions since you were not you're an officer in position of leadership, or did they pretty much just stand back and let you? command in the camp yes we uh we had a very small presence in the camp itself uh we were tasked with um guarding what was called the radio range complex uh it's where the there was a uh shanty town there from uh Haitian um migrants that we're trying to get get to get to the Amer uh, to, to the states that was built in the and when that happened in the 90s I don't remember exactly when it was um, and they demolished a lot of those structures to build Camp Delta um, we controlled we had checkpoints on all the roads that remained 24 hours a day I had observation posts I had foot patrols um, walking you know going through the hills in the cacti and I had vehicle, uh, vehicles with machine guns, Humvees with machine guns that were patrolling around and we would practice, uh, we, pra we were there to repel attempted assaults, uh, by whoever <laughs> to destroy the camp and, and kill the, the detainees to prevent us from attracting information. 